less to do with economics, but more to do... I reckon the, the, the one that's starting to raise its head now is just rent. <laughs> hello, hello. Ready for something. Hello, ready. <laughs> you ready for episode 26? 26, yes. Yes, we are. Here we are. Here on we are. September 17th. Ba- bathing in the sunshine. It is quite sunny, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, it was funny, it was just before it was real cloudy. And I can't I can't look at you because every time I do, the sun's bright in my face. Well, so. what are you saying? Bounce off my forehead. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I'm saying. <laughs> Dickhead. Uh, oh, shit. Um, mate, before we jump in, quick shout out, sponsors, as always, Bintani, Craft Punks Canning, Convoy Kegs, Rattlings Labels and Stickers, and of course, Hiker Brewing Concern. Concern. Are you keeping the concern? Yeah, I am a bit concerned at the moment. So, okay, yeah, mm, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's yeah, a lot going on, so yep. not, not to the pace I want it to happen, but anyway. Oh, yeah. But we're getting there, we're yeah, getting there. Uh, Hopefully it all changes soon. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. Yeah, I've got a couple of big things in the pipeline, so... Excellent. It's all good. Uh, Taking over line next week, it's fine. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Listing on the ASX. <laughs> Just going great guns around, around yeah, the world. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, but it's pretty, like, so- sobering news, you know, like, first articles, what, 20-plus craft bre- breweries have gone bust in the last economic downturn. 20-plus. 20 20-plus. 20 yeah, Jeez. it's um, a lot, eh? It's a lot of breweries, it's a lot of beer, um, it's a lot of people's livelihoods and life yeah. um, style that they've had to come to terms with, and it's sad, isn't it? Um, yeah, it, it it's, is. It's getting to that point. Uh, that you just wonder, yeah, you, you wonder where, when it's all going to end, so... But, yeah, um... I don't know, there's surely, like, there mustn't be, surely there mustn't be, like, too many more uh, down the line, so. Yeah, it's, um, well, I just, yeah, I, I don't know what to, what to sort of make of it. It's, um, very difficult in all respects because there's, how do you, it's it's like running a restaurant or a bar. Um, we're not a place that is required. No, like people don't have to come out to these venues. It's a, if they want to come, and if they don't want to come, you got to try and attract them. And um, I think I think as the craft beer market's maturing and probably even on the downtown a little bit, you know, people are looking for that full offering. You know, I was no longer just make good beer and they will come yeah although they seem to come to Salisbury um, yeah. <laughs> but for, for good beer um, but yeah but I think people are wanting the full offering so it, it's yeah you're a hospitality business you're not a brewing business anymore so yeah and whether you know people are interested in seeing stainless steel or not there's probably a small minor- minority that really enjoy it yep um, whereas yeah people are just after the full package good yeah. food good food Depends on how Drinks. you dress everything up. I don't think it's a... You can't do, you know, out of 10 things in your venue anymore, you can't just pick five and they're the five that you do really well at and you, you know, you try and make the best of the other five. I think nowadays you've got to be yeah. hitting eight or nine really, really well. Yeah. And the other two or one or two that yeah. are left, um, you're trying to pick up the slack on and you're constantly trying to reinvent and move move the cards around yeah. to always be picking up that lowest link in the chain. And yeah, you always got to be improving, hey? Yeah. It's, uh, but, you know, that's mean. I think there'll probably be some more closures, yeah, and probably less to do with economics, but more to do... I reckon the, the, the one that's starting to raise its head now is just rent. Yeah. Like rent on buildings. Yeah. Like, you know, rent's coming up for renegotiation or whatever, and it's just like... Yeah, just getting smashed with that. Like it's well, such a big, it's such such a big cost to your business if you're paying 
heaps. Like we, you know, I remember when I was doing my business plan for Hiker, and you know, like Lee from White Lies was a was a great sounding board. And he always said, rent's got to be you got to get a, less than ten percent of your of your of your sales. Yep. So and you know and like we we picked up this shed pretty cheaply, but it's still. 17 still sitting at 17 percent so yeah, 17 right. percent of our costs is just in rent yeah so yeah shit, eh? so it, it adds up so you put labor on top of that and put yep. put you know everything else yeah uh, it's a big whack so yep. yeah i reckon i reckon yeah that's that's i know and i know that was the issue potentially with parts and brew barons was yep. the rent on that building yeah so they sell a lot of things and i know there's a lot few other breweries that I've got pretty high rent, so you've got to sell a lot of beer to like pay the rent. Yeah, I think I heard um, on the Crafty Pint podcast last week um, that Atomic Brewing in Sydney, that Good Drinks closed, was losing like was it fifty thousand a month or oh really five hundred thousand dollars a year that it was losing. Jeez. Um, and it'd been up for sale for a while, and if if it's losing that much money, who's going to buy that business? Mm. Like, who's going to walk in and do the due diligence on a business and go, oh, hell yeah, sign me up to take on this? Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, huh? This losing thing. And it's, um, yeah, no, I think rent, rent's the, I think that's the sleeping giant at the moment. Yeah, well, I think, was it yesterday or over the weekend, uh, Tumut River or Tumut yeah. River? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, closing one of their venues and something to do with a roundabout and which, that's the end, that's, that's an external factor that... Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just another issue that doesn't help you yeah nice not good anyway um enough pessimism let's talk about an opening yes i'm uh, very excited i actually I'm really keen yeah. i'm really keen to go down because uh, i haven't gone down and i really want to yeah so uh, we're talking about roji cat is it yes uh toshi's, toshi's new menu yeah yeah um and for those who don't know toshi he um was well-respected, regarded brewer um, in Black Ops. Did you work with him? Uh, I only ever... Well, obviously worked at the same same time as him, but he was sort of down at HQ and yep. I was at BH2. Yep. So we did sort of cross paths and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, no, very well-respected within the Black Ops family and, you know, had very particular ways in which he brewed. Yep. Um, you know, and, like, he was, like, very passionate particularly you know obviously brewing good beer yeah it was so funny i remember um yeah like code red like code red is one of my all-time favorite uh red ipas yep uh i know royal queensland beer awards every year it used to like get gold or a trophy or whatever and then when toshi didn't brew it um we ended up brewing it at bh2 and his understudy um Stu, Stuart, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know so, Stu, yeah, yeah. So, so, so he he brewed it, and the running joke within uh, Black Ops was it was code brown because it <laughs> didn't have the colour, couldn't get it red, <laughs> couldn't get the colour. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, it was just it was it was hilarious. So it was yeah, good banner, but yeah, but yeah, Toshi's uh, <laughs> Toshi's a great guy, and I remember I heard rumblings from Stu. Stu told me, hey, Toshi is like opening a brewery. And I went, oh, okay. Oh, hey. So anyway, I went to Toshi. I said, Toshi, I hear you opening a brewery. Where'd you hear that from? He was so like secret squirrel. Yeah. He didn't want anyone to know. Right. And he was uh, going, where do you, where? I said, oh, I can't remember. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, Stu, I'm throwing you under the bus. Yeah. But, well, uh, and I went, oh, I don't word know. Word got out pretty quick because I've been waiting on this for like 18 months yeah like, so it's taken, him, it's taken taken him a while yeah so but yeah and no, I'm pretty excited to go down and have a have a bow peep at it yeah well it, it, from the photos in the article that we'll put in the show notes um it looks really cool it's like full Japanese style yeah. um street yeah, bar that you go yeah into, it's got the lanterns and stuff and it? yeah it's got all, all the, the fit paper out lanterns there's and stuff. a lot of um artwork there's the karaoke room there's a lot of stuff going on, as well as a whole bunch of um, sake that okay. Toshi has also um, handpicked um, yep. for the venue. Oh, nice. So I think it'll be excellent. Yeah, and cool. if you're in the Miami area on the Gold Coast, um, drop in, check it out. Yeah, yeah. Super keen to go down and have a look. Yeah. Um, next Mate, one. So Archer. Archer Brewing. Um, so I was at Archer yesterday. Uh, we uh, were filming uh, an episode. Uh, 
better say, are they open seven days? No, they're not. No. Um, thankfully, um, Chris um, was happy to, whether or not he was going to be there on a Monday or he came in just for us. Yeah. Uh, but he was in there for us. We filmed him, had a chat, tasted all of his beers, and by all his beers, I mean all his beers, yeah. uh, which was excellent. There were some massive notable standouts, like the Japanese lager, uh, the Doppelbock. Um, oh, look, all of them were great. Mm. Um, but yeah, they were a couple that I really enjoyed. And his Vienna lager that he's got coming out for Oktoberfest as well, that they've got their event on this weekend, I think. Yep. Um, so yeah, really, really, really cool. Um, Spot. I haven't been there before. I had the beers before, but I'd never been there before. Yeah, I haven't so been. To... I, I keep forgetting about them. Mm. No, I'm oh. going to find my way there more often now because yeah. it's real close to the train tracks as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the reason mentioning them is they had a customer come in and complain about uh, dogs being in their venue. Mm. And council told them you can't have dogs in your venue anymore and they're leading the fight to have the law changed so the dogs can come out. Yeah, um, into venues like ours that are more relaxed and chilled mm. and mm. Um, things like that. Like I think if people if people want to go out and drink beer, and they want to go into these sort of venues, we're very welcoming of pets and yeah, uh, well dogs. No, not pets. Like, of, you don't bring your pet. No, they're rat part or of the family fish now. Fish tank so. or something. Mm. Um, but yeah, I just think it's it's a shame for them, and they've managed to get a huge amount of signatures in support of this. They've, been, and it has to go through for SANS. Did you know that? No. For SANS is the governing body on okay. the laws that um, look after the food licenses of um, really of the venues. That's, so, so it's well, so they set the standards, then the local councils applies so, it. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So uh, um, yeah, a bit of a shame. Because is that is that just? Be- for, with food or is it is it because uh, they've got food on you don't know no it, reading in the license um, you because they don't have any external like outdoor dining yeah which is where the dogs are meant to go there's been a number of cafes that have also been caught out with this and yep. a whole lot of other stuff which I find it very weird because coming up through Annerley there's a friggin cat cafe <laughs> like that's that's their business ploy Oh, yeah. So bring your cat. Yeah. So I don't understand mm. um, why this has been such an issue. You know, if no. you don't like dogs and you go in and man, you must really love the beer and hate dogs oh. to make a complaint and do that to a business. I think it's um, it's just wrong. Yeah. So yeah. No, what's that space? Oh, good luck to them because I know like obviously Archer is named after a dog. Yeah, that's right. So the dog's called Archer. Obviously, they must like flying planes. So Stuart, the owner, was it Snoopy? Uh, he's an ex-pilot. Ah, and um, I wonder if the dog ever went up with him. But yeah, Mile so. High Club. I don't know. Like, oh, Phil, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Jokes. Um, I, um, so the next article I found. This is over in the US, but it's it's a thing. Uh, and it's an article about that it's not just um, beer that's losing ground, it's alcohol as a whole. Yeah. Um, and Gen Z and millennials are just not drinking as much uh, alcohol at all. And it's starting to affect everyone. Mm. And obviously beer is one of the most um, consumed. Do you reckon know? when they get older they'll start drinking? When yeah, they realise life is fucking hard? I think they will, man. I think that they'll just... Everything comes in waves, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. beer's always been around, but I just think, yeah, they're... I, I, I think... I think they're gonna I, want I think, surely they're going to want something other than this super sweet, just alcohol booze. Yeah, like, but, but even booze. just like drinking in general, it's yeah. just like... Yeah. yeah. But it's that social... It's that social norm that we used to have, and then COVID broke that generational thing yeah you couldn't go out to places there was that no sort of people call it like a rite of passage but mm. i don't think that it is but it was just that that thing that you just did and some people either enjoyed it some people enjoyed it too much um and then other people just took it for what it was just you know yeah. involved themselves and moved along but 
Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think it's one of those things that mm. hopefully, hopefully changes. But yeah, it's, yeah. I, I think it will. Yeah. yeah. Everything comes and goes. So yeah. I realise they can't buy a house and <laughs> start. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> start doing life. Uh, oh, far anyway. out. Yeah. Um, um, mate, home brewing. You were you were a home brewer. Yeah. And it was when expensive. did you stop? When, I, when, when did I stop? <laughs> yeah. When I started building an actual brewery. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, um, uh, it's you used to do home brewing because it was cheaper, right? You'd buy the extract. That's kit, how you start. Kit and kilo. That's how yeah. you start. The super cheap. Because I'm a tight ass, as yeah. people know. Yeah. Yeah. And and it is cheaper. When you yeah. do that, yeah. But, but as you started improving and you're enjoying your beer, you want to do better, and things get more and more expensive. Yeah, equipment every and, single time because yeah. you keep thinking, "Oh, what do I need to make this better? Oh, yeah. I need a small fridge to ferment this in. Oh, I need a controller to look after that. Oh, I want to go to all grain. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, I know. Yep, these are the yeasts that I need. These are the hops that I want, and then all your other equipment that comes along with it. Yep, uh, that's an expensive little yeah. hobby. Yeah. Do you think that it's something that, like, because it is so expensive, like, why bother? With yeah. the amount of craft beers that are around now and breweries, like, such as us, here oh, at Hiker, that do oh, so many different varieties. Yeah, I think now, I think, yeah, I think home brewers, yeah, I don't think it's ever going to hit the peak. I think it'd probably hit the peak probably during COVID. Yep. Uh, that's definitely when I did a lot of it because you're stuck at home. Yeah, so. I, well, I was working in a home brew shop at the time. Oh man, we were flat out. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah, because also you know I was watching my my money because I was on JobKeeper and stuff like that. So yep. yeah, it was definitely a way to um, keep it. But yeah, it's hard. It's interesting. Like yeah, because there's so many different beers out there now. So it's sort of why bother. You know, yeah. so and it's also like the time, hey, it takes a lot of time to do it. So yeah. you've got to have a pretty understanding partner. And particularly if you've got young kids and stuff like that, it mm. becomes it's it's just a time thing. But yeah, but now you can freaking go to a bottle shop and just about buy any style of beer that you would like. Yeah. So that being said, like um, we were only talking about it last week with the Q A B C mm. that was in here and they're all home brewers. Yep. And that was a pretty good showing. Yeah, how many uh, entries I'd didn't really I, keep I don't tax. know, but it would. I think, I think it, it was, was down a little. I don't know. Yeah, but every even the professional awards this year have been down. Yeah, exactly. A little. So yeah, yeah. Everyone, everyone's down. It's affecting everyone. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. No, but yeah, no, but all power to them, and that's mean like the home brew clubs. Clubs are you know, they're doing, you know, thing. But there's been a couple of little home brew shops closed down of yeah. late. Not not great ones, but you sort of. Yeah, we'd like to see more of that and getting people into it. But also, you know, we'd also like to see sort of more than middle-aged men doing it. So yeah, that's 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 the trick. How do you how do you how do you boost it to to other other segments? Yep. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, good old good old homebrew. It is expensive. You yeah, can go down the rabbit hole. Now, yeah, mate, um, <coughs> today earlier you were walking around in your letter hosen. Yep. Uh, what was that for? Because uh, we're brewing our <laughs> very, very, <laughs> very, very late, late. <laughs> October this year. So <laughs> it's actually um, yeah, a Vienna lager, even though Vienna's not in uh, in Germany. Yep. But, you know, but yeah. Vienna lager is very, you know, it's sort of like a Marzen or whatever it's yeah, called. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we're, we're just not going to lager it since March. Yep. Um, but, yeah, so I get doing that. So that was actually one of my... Yeah, it, actually, it's my epiphany beer. Yeah, so okay. So it, it was the beer that I fell in... That got me into craft beer was Vienna Lager. Yeah, right. So, yeah, Rooftop from Matilda Bay. Yep. Um, so, great beer. So, yeah, that was when I went, oh, beer can actually taste different. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, yeah, well, sort of, I would not have picked that as a beer, as a epiphany beer. Yeah. 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 Well, pretty limited in Rockhampton, you know. <laughs> yeah, I guess. No. Yeah. yeah. Oh, actually, yeah. I was in Melbourne when I had it. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was well after I'd left uh, Rocky. But yeah, so no, and that was one of my homebrew beers that I'd sort of, sort of like was kept kept tweaking and stuff like that to try and get it better. So yeah, yeah. so we, we scaled it up. So I actually got on the tools. Uh, yeah today for a little yeah, bit yeah yeah i noticed yeah. you didn't help dan grain out 
Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> the, um, yeah. So, so the whole, yeah, the whole. I just did the fun, was, um, fun, fun bits. That's right. But I actually, yeah, need to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, so Stop Octoberfest d- yep. starts this Saturday. So that's the date oh, that it actually I, starts. So I want to go. Yeah, don't we all? And um, I got a the, taste of it earlier this year with Springfest. And yeah. Was like, yep. So oh. no, I'd love. Have you, you've never been over to Munich for Oktoberfest? No, but yeah, Spring Springfest yeah. is closest. Springfest is probably it's on exactly the same site. Yep. But it's probably like twenty percent size of Oktoberfest. There's this massive field, and yeah, just like all year, it's just barren. Yeah. And then they build build all the the beer halls and stuff like that. And yeah, then, right. Then Springfest is just this tiny little corner. Yeah, right. And you just go, and it was it was epic. Just yeah. The day I went, and I'm just going, imagine this whole place like full. Yeah. It would be freaking unreal. Yeah. The only problem is, you know, you need to take lots of money yeah. for all the toilet, which is... Yeah, okay. Because every time you got to go to the toilet, you got to pay to go to the toilet. Yeah, right, okay. It's very annoying. Yeah. Taking off your leader house. Yeah, yeah. Then, yeah, anyway. Yeah, right. There so, you go, people. If you're going to Oktoberfest, yeah, it's t- take some coin. Take some coin. Mm. Yeah, yeah I want to take coin and the beer ho- things because I didn't realise like I'd never been. So yep. and then order all this beer because like because the the barmaids they actually bring you the beer. They actually buy the beer. Yep. And then they sell you the beer. So they need cash. Oh right, okay. So, I so just, you can't I just have your FBOS card. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just handed out my card. She just looked at me. No, no, ATM. Uh, uh, fucking here we go. <laughs> so I had to go and line up the ATM for about ten minutes to get some cash With out. With all the, the other and, people, and, and uh, old, old Helga was freaking like watching us like a whore. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, yeah. We weren't going to do a runner anyway. <laughs> There you go, there's Phil's tips for today. Yeah, there you go, that's great. So, yeah, so it starts before October. Yeah, yeah, did you never that. understood that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people don't, though. No, no, no. Um, it does finish in October, I think around the yeah. 7th or something. I don't know the date this year. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, we'll have our October fest on the Should 5th. Good. On the 5th, yep. Yeah, so buses, uh, yeah. Bermuda, Oktoberfest. Should be a good yeah. day, that one. Should be. Um, mate, this next article. Have you ever had to deal with diastaticus? No. Um, so tell, dia- me, tell me more. Well, allow me to educate you. Diastaticus is uh, one of those foreign yeasts that you do not want in your beer because it um, breaks down the protein that's left. Um, and keeps fermenting. Adds extra CO2. That's why when you see a lot of those recalls that may explode or things yep. like that, it's usually down to a diastaticus infection. Not always. It can be anything. There can be fruit that's re-fermenting and yep. all sorts of stuff. Um, but aside from that, they found that in Saccharomyces cerevisiae that it does have in itself some toxins to kill diastaticus yeast in its tracks. And so they're trying to work out, A, how come it doesn't in beers when you get a diastaticus infection, and B, um, what sort of recipe or how can they use those toxins okay. to kill diastaticus before it actually starts doing that in your beers. Interesting. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so, so what are they trying to isolate it or something? Or? I think they're trying to find exactly what toxins are um like which ones it is i did find it pretty funny in there um there's one bit in the article where it, um it says uh, the come of the, some of the proteins known as killer toxins killer toxins <laughs> okay that sounds pretty bad um but yeah i think the scientists were just looking at it and there's 34 diastatic strains of yeast and there's eight known killer toxins that the Saccharomyces strain produce. Mm. So, there you go. You know, yeast, yeast is fascinating. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah. It's a super uh, fascinating it is. Um, organism. And there's probably 60 billion different yeasts that haven't even been discovered yet. Yep. So that's, that's the excite, exciting part about it. Yes. But another one I found. Um, 
I don't know whether you've ever heard of Ozempic um, at all as the weight loss drug. No. So in New Zealand, um, some New Zealand hops have a, uh, I don't know what it's like a, sort of a, it's a thing that you get out of hops yep. um, that have this thing in it called Amarisate, um, which could be a natural alternative to weight loss drugs such as Ozempic to losing weight. So, yeah, but you don't want to pop a hop pellet in your mouth. Oh, you do not want to do that. <laughs> no, no, no. I did that. That, to, that would stop you eating. I did that to Cade when he was two, uh, poor was... little kid. And um, yeah, he looked at me with. Yeah. After he asked, he yeah. asked, and I was like, "Yeah, give it a crack, mate. I've never done it. Let's <laughs> see what happens." And he put one in his mouth, and just, just the look of betrayal yeah. on his little <laughs> face. And I've never felt so bad. But I tell you what. He never asked to do it again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, I remember, man. yeah, if someone on the tape course did it, it was just like, holy white man. Huh? Yeah. So, but, um, but yeah, so the science, scientists are trying to um, extract this um, stuff, which is amarasate, um, to have this natural... Um, it's more... So it's, it reduces hunger by 30%. Reduces hunger. Yeah. Yep. Which is pretty yeah, cool. Nice. Yeah, we should, should just keep drinking and then that reduces hunger. Well, that's what I'm e- thinking. Eating's cheating. Yeah, yeah, you got a got a glass of bread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, mate, the last one is growing hops indoors to better increase yield and flavours. Now, I remember years ago there was Phillips actually promoted that they could grow hops indoors using their grow lights that they have. Um, and they brought up this study that they'd done and said that you don't need to worry about the hops having a seasonal um, a seasonal thing anymore, yeah. like, you know, where they go to dormant in winter and whatnot. Um, it's just the light that they really need yeah, well, to be you able look to at, have the... Yeah, look at Hilltop. That's exactly right. They've got, they've got lights there. Well, they they lights, light, to, so they get two, two harvests a year. Yeah. Um, but where it was sort of on it was the increased flavor in the hops and i wonder if it's because it's grown indoors that it's less susceptible to mites and mildew and all those things or if it's something else that such as they're able to just turn over you know different breeding yeah, of the hops know. to find things a lot quicker um or if it's something else like it's just yeah because they often talk about you know even like the same hop in the same area, but yep. you know, on that side of the hill, it's got a different flavour than that. Uh, you know, yeah, terroir, so like terroir, similar to the yeah, water. Yeah. So it's, so it's interesting in regards to mm. yeah. So there's a Spanish business that said it's grown indoors, and now Japan's Kirin um, is also doing indoor growing of hops. Um, which I wonder if they can grow the hops and get more yield out of them indoors. If you can grow hops indoors and get three seasons three or four seasons in a year of hops mm. well that uses a quarter less acreage externally yeah but i suppose then it's just the infrastructure do. cost of yeah of building indoor you know big sheds or whatever i don't mm. know it's yeah, it'd be a fascinating thing for an economist to to work. well like if you could get four seasons out of a out of a hop plant um, yeah. as opposed to one a year one or two yeah, um, yeah, there'd definitely be a, there'd be a, you know, like a financial viability point yeah. at some point. But yeah, and, and whether whether the the, the the binds need dormant time anyway to yeah. recover or whatever, who knows? Yep. But it seems to like Hilltop seemed to do all right with two. So yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll get a text message from Andrew once he listens to this because anytime I mention hops, he always sends me cool facts or yeah. an article. Um, about something about the hops, which yeah. is awesome. So, yeah, Andrew, let me know if you've got any info. It'll be great. Yeah. Anything else, mate? Um, no. So, no, nothing really. So it's sort yeah. of footy season's nearly up uh, over. Just gearing up for October first. We gearing um, up for a couple of other big events. Oh, here, here at Hiker, we got, I got to taste the uh, evergreen. Ah, oh, the turbine, the yeah. turbine one. Yeah. Um, 
which do you reckon which is the next beer coming on is it the nine trails the amber well we're, the... we're packing evergreen tomorrow and then packing nine trails yeah. thursday because that's a big run because it's a collab with my mm, beer, beer dealer. dealer so we're doing like 80 cartons or yeah, okay. which is not a big run for some breweries but it's probably the biggest run we'll ever do um but yeah no i don't know probably fire trail will come off so fire trail so they'll get re- replaced by evergreen yep. yeah i quite like it evergreen yeah the interesting thing is the the terpene freaking is awful for head retention yeah so that's the only downside i reckon of yep of it so don't know how you well i suppose it's because it's probably oily i don't yeah. know i don't know oh, yeah it's, it's, what can you add some tetra hop i guess or i don't know yeah but that's that that's probably my only i really like the flavor of it i just that's my yeah. only feedback is head yeah, retention. it smells really orange doesn't yeah. it like it um almost like a barocca orange yeah it smells like and then you taste it and it's not that flavor at all like it's yeah. very different and mix it yeah it's a nice beer so yeah no it's definitely yeah but that's yeah that's my only feedback on yeah. I'm going to binge to see what the punters think. So a lot of people don't worry about it. I'm very particular about head retention. Yeah. It's one of the, I think you've got to make a beer look good. 100%. You and me both, mate. It's, um, um, it's very important. Yes. Um, yeah, no, that's about it. Just like keep on keeping on. Shipping container, slowly getting there. Yeah. Um, working on Back to the Future. Oh, day. yes. Yep. So that's pretty excited. Yeah. Got some, got some big things happening. I actually made something for you today um, in Canva. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. I've well, got something coming yeah. um, for you that we can print up um, for the venue. So it's a um, big ass um, speed limit sign, 88. Yeah, nice. Um, and then I've got a flux capacitor warning sign. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So lock in, lock in. Uh, was it the nineteenth? Nineteenth of October. You were Back to the Future days on the twenty first. Twenty first. Yeah. yeah we're back to the future. We're traveling into the future. Where? Uh, yeah. We're just mucking around with the space time continuum. That's just right. to fit it into a Saturday. Hundred <laughs> <laughs> um, percent. You got a beer for this one? Yeah. Um, out of time. Yeah. So yeah, we're brewing that as a collab with uh, Lee from White Lies. So he's in for a treat. So yeah, yeah. I heard a little rumor that it's going to be some fun for Lee. Like, that's going to be great. So keep yeah, an we'll, eye we'll, on. We'll watch this space. Keep an eye on that. <laughs> he's going to love it. <laughs> yeah. And we, yeah. And we got a DeLorean coming, so that'll be exciting on the day. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be real cool. Yeah. Yeah. So that's about it. Yeah. And then yeah, gearing up for everything else. And I trail run tonight. So you come for a trail run? No. I don't run. I've got a body of a walker. <laughs> so, so do I, but I, yeah. I, 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 I try and keep keep up with them. Yeah, no, I, I probably need to. I actually used to do long distance running. I do enjoy long distance running, but you wouldn't know it to look at me now. Yeah. Um, but no. I, it's probably something I should take up again. But yeah. it's also one of those things. I reckon getting into fitness and getting into those things, it's like when someone you hire someone to clean your house. Yeah. And before they come, you clean their house a little bit. You clean your house yeah, a little yeah, yeah. bit so that they don't see your house dirty. Yeah. I reckon that's what I'm like with running. I don't want to go and do a trail run with everyone until I've done some running. And well, that's that's the thing. That's <laughs> my big thing. Yeah, because I've been doing like with, uh, you know, because we sponsor Mountain Gate Trail Runners. Yep. So I've done the last three Wednesday nights. So they do Mount Cutha every Wednesday night. Yeah, and sort of they've been pestering me for ages to come. Yep. And I'm going, yeah, I'm not fitting up enough. And I went, oh, you know what? I've got to start somewhere. Yeah. So started, yeah, last by yeah. a long way. Last by, not so long. Last week I actually beat someone home. Oh, yeah, okay. So gradually. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm going to have to But I'm still, something. I'm still, like, yeah. Jason, Halky, and yeah, all yeah. those, and Benny, they're like still, but yeah. I'm but gonna I, have to do something because I I promised Cade at the start of this year he cut started karate, yeah. and I promised him I said, mate, if you stick with karate to the end of the year, I will do karate with you next year. And I thought I'd said it as a flippant comment that he would forget, mate. He has not forgotten. Yeah. He goes every week and he says, hey, dad, it's near the end of the year. When are you gonna get your karate gear together? Oh, like, when are you when are you having your singing thing? Are you still doing that? Um. Well, now that you've hired me, I thought maybe I'd gotten out of that. <laughs> I'm still singing. I still do sing. Um, 
learning. Yeah. But yeah, we might have to come up with a date, hey? Just yeah. do a yeah, test out the acoustics in the old Ooh, shed here. Yeah, yeah. Might, uh, yeah, scare a few people off. So yeah, that's yeah. Fine. Uh, uh, that's all right. Yeah, we'll, we'll do it. Because you always try and do something every year, something yes. different. So next year it's going to be karate by the sound of it. No, no, because I've already done karate. I, I was a um, second damn black belt, but um, it's been. Geez, 30 years yeah. since I've done karate. So um, do you retain that, that status? I don't know. I don't think so. I'm not going to tell them what I did because it's pretty embarrassing. <laughs> you know, this is what I used yeah. to be. Is there a competency? Um, like, you know, like... No, but it's... Um, <laughs> but I think doing all the fitness structures and the carter and all of that stuff is... Um, I still remember a lot of stuff, but I'm just... You know, if that's something that Cade's looking forward to and I've got this father-son bond. Yeah, thing, that's good. I'll, I'll going to be good. For sure. So, yeah, can't hurt. No. He's, um, he's You'll have to madly... go down and have some sneak classes just in oh, rain yeah. with, with, with he's, Shane. He's madly earning belts um, so that he can say that, oh, Dad's only a white belt and I'm a green. <laughs> he's like... No, that's funny. <laughs> trying to get on, but yeah. So, uh, I think... Oh, does, it, does it go white, yellow? It green. goes white, yellow, yeah, orange tip, yellow, yeah. and now yeah, all these different things. But um, yeah, I don't know. This is um, Gokan Ru, um, which I did Shadow Khan, which I don't know overlap on styles. Yeah, got no idea. Is, so, yeah, I was not the next Karate Kid at all. But, yeah, yeah, over my head. I just did it because I used to get picked on as a ranger, so it was <laughs> self defence. Fair enough. <laughs> Yeah. All right, oh, we better right. stop waffling. 100%, mate. Cheers for today. Pour it out. Yeah, take a hike. <laughs>